Welcome to the Physiology of CPR and the new bundle of cardiac arrest care. My name is Keith Lurie. I am a cardiologist, an electrophysiologist, and a developer of medical devices. We're going to talk today primarily about elevated CPR. This is a new concept and it's based on elevating the head and the thorax during CPR to improve outcomes. In order to understand this, I'd like to spend some time reviewing the physiology of CPR. Many of you have seen these slides before. This is a anatomical view of the thorax. During the compression phase of manual CPR, when you press down on the chest, the pressure within inside the chest, or the so-called intrathoracic pressure, increases, and the heart gets squished a little bit between the spine and the sternum. So that pressure inside the thorax causes blood to go out of the heart and to the brain. But what people often forget is that right around the area of the spinal cord, which is highlighted in red, there are veins that are able to transduce pressure from the thorax to the brain. So each time you push down on the thorax, intracranial pressure goes up, and that's not necessarily good. High intracranial pressure is what happens when you have traumatic brain injury, and high intracranial pressure reduces blood flow to the brain as it is a resistor to forward flow. During the recoil phase, shown on the right, if the chest is allowed to fully recoil, then a little vacuum develops inside the thorax, and that results in pulling blood back into the heart, and because of the pressure transduction between the thorax and the brain, intracranial pressure goes down. This is the only time that the heart refills, and during manual closed chest compression, this system is not very effective. You only get about 15 to 20 percent of normal blood flow to the heart and the brain. This graph shows what happens when you have ideal CPR in an animal model. On the left, normal physiology with 100% of good cardiac output, and on the right, you see that in an animal model with perfect CPR, you only get about 15.7% of normal blood flow coming out of the heart. While that's good enough for some patients, it's typically not good enough long term, and we think we can improve things. When we think traditionally about CPR, we forget about the fact that when you push down on the chest, not only does an arterial wave front go to the brain, so you have arterial pressure going to the brain, you also have venous pressure wave front going to the brain because of the pressure that goes up in the thorax, pushing venous blood to the brain as well. This causes a high pressure compression wave to the brain with every compression. And this is shown graphically. On the top, you can see normal physiology. Intracranial pressure goes up and down with each breath, but we stay out of the dangerous zone or the so-called compression zone. But with CPR, each time you push down on the chest, the intracranial pressure can go up to levels that are dangerously high, causing actual damage to the brain. So there are ways to improve blood flow and to reduce this potential damage to the brain. And that's the goal of the new bundle. We have more blood delivered to the brain and the heart. We lower intracranial pressure and this provides an opportunity for higher survival rates with good brain function. And these are the technologies shown in the slide that we're going to talk about. So we'll start with the impedance threshold device, also known as the ITD-16 or the rescue pod. And this is a device that is attached to the airway. And if you compare pressures in the thorax or the chest with standard CPR alone, versus CPR with the impedance threshold device, you can see the pressure curves here. These are intrathoracic pressure curves or airway pressure curves. On the left, without that device, you see a rise in intrathoracic pressure, and then the little tiny vacuum that develops each time the chest is allowed to recoil. On the right, you see a greater vacuum that develops inside the thorax, and that greater vacuum sucks more blood back into the heart and lowers intracranial pressure. This results in improved circulation. In fact, doubles blood flow to the heart and the brain with just a pair of hands. But you have to do high quality CPR. You have to do CPR according to the guidelines, which is about 100 to 110 compressions per minute and two inches of chest compression with full chest wall recoil. 
Now, if we compare standard CPR to active compression decompression CPR with the impedance threshold device, or ACD CPR shown here, when you push down on the chest, it's a similar kind of physiology with both methods of CPR. The pressure in the chest goes up, the heart gets squished a little bit, blood goes out to the brain, and air flows out of the lungs with minimal impedance from the impedance threshold device. However, during the recoil phase, this is when there's quite a difference. With standard CPR, there's passive recoil as the lungs recoil, and a little tiny vacuum develops to pull some blood back into the heart and pulls a little bit of air into the lungs. As a result, you don't have very much circulation. But if you use the device combination of ACD CPR and the ITD, then you create quite a vacuum inside the thorax, somewhere between 8 to 12 centimeters of water, and that enhances circulation back to the heart, refills the heart, lowers intracranial pressure, and results in a significant improvement in circulation. Now we introduce the elevated CPR with the Eligard. This is a device that is a patient positioning device designed to be used with manual CPR, active compression decompression CPR, or the Lucas device. And as you can see, the Lucas backplate is already built into this device. The device is battery powered. You put the patient on it just as you're ready to start doing CPR, high quality CPR. And then as you'll see, we're going to prime the pump for a couple minutes and then push a button to elevate the head to the optimal position. When you use this concept of active compression, decompression, CPR with the ITD and the Lucas device, look what happens to intracranial pressures. You can do high quality CPR with the head and thorax elevated and stay out of the concussion zone. This slide demonstrates the physiology with standard CPR or SCPR and then active compression, decompression, CPR with the impedance threshold device, both flat and then elevated. And for these studies, we simply elevated the head and the thorax about 30 degrees. The bottom tracings show that with standard CPR without the ITD, that the cerebral perfusion pressures are terrible at the end of 20 minutes, and none of those pigs could be resuscitated with or without head elevation. The cerebral perfusion pressures were not compatible with life. The orange line with active compression, decompression, CPR flat demonstrates a significant improvement in cerebral perfusion pressure, but nonetheless, it's not nearly as great as when you elevated the head and the heart. So why elevate the thorax well, and the head? When you do that, you drain venous blood out of the brain. You immediately lower intracranial pressure, thereby allowing more arterial blood to get to the brain. You reduce this concussion with every compression, you enhance right to left heart circulation. It's like having a patient with heart failure who wants to sit up. And as a result, you significantly improve, improve blood flow to the heart as well. And you actually double blood flow to the brain versus ACD, ITD flat. So elevation is quite helpful to improve circulation both to the heart and the brain. Over the last several years, we've developed a unique way to do this which almost normalizes cerebral perfusion pressure over time. So the bottom graph in purple is similar to the one I just showed you, standard CPR, elevated or flat, doesn't do very much at all. ACD, ITD, supine is good. We can make it better by elevating the heart and the head, but using the Eligard, which is uniquely designed for a head-up CPR, we initially place the head and the heart in a slightly elevated position, and then we prime for two minutes, and then we elevate the head slowly over two minutes to the optimal height. And you can see the Eligard physiology here with cerebral perfusion pressure, cerebral blood flow effectively approaching much higher levels than you can achieve when CPR is done in a flat position. Similarly, blood flow to the heart, or so-called coronary perfusion pressure is shown here the Eligard physiology is far superior. So let's walk through what this new bundle of care looks like. In this picture, we're using manual ACD CPR, the impedance threshold device, and the Eligard. And in this image, we're showing that with the Lucas device and the impedance threshold device. 
Ideally, if a patient is found in cardiac arrest, the patient receives manual chest compressions with standard CPR as soon as possible. And then, without pausing in chest compressions, you would put the patient onto the Eligard and continue to do chest compressions. Transition as soon as you can to adding the impedance threshold device and active compression decompression CPR. You prime the pump for two minutes in that flat position where the head is actually elevated already about 10 centimeters. And then you push a button on the Eligard and that enables you to uh, elevate the head and the thorax to the optimal position, which is about 22 centimeters for the head and about 10 centimeters for the heart. So this sequence is essential. Start with the Eligard in the down position with the ITD, high quality CPR per your protocol for two minutes to prime the pump, get the circulation moving, and then slowly elevate the head and thorax over two minutes. Continue your CPR until you have a return of spontaneous circulation. So in conclusion, elevated CPR offers several advantages, but you have to do it correctly, which means high quality CPR, use of the impedance threshold device to enhance circulation because you actually have to pump blood uphill a little bit to the head, and then you need to have this sequenced elevation of the thorax and the head with the Eligard to optimize the results. And in this manner, we create a new opportunity for more survivors with good brain function. After all, that's our goal. Thank you for your attention.